Welcome back, viewers, to the Personal Injury Law Show. We're talking about fatalities in the workplace. Nuncio, we're talking about the matter of Amcor. Yeah, look, John, an interesting thing I think comes out of Amcor. Uh, the employer in this case, you know, made submissions to the court basically saying that, look, we shouldn't be fine because it's never happened to us before, so really what's the issue? Well, I think that's a lesson to employers. That's not the case. Is it one, once is enough? And I think the court in making these prosecutions want to, I suppose, deter employees well, from... So the guy died. That's right. So the, it's a gender deterrence, it's a punishment as well. So it's not enough. If it costs whatever it costs, safety is paramount and, you know, the courts will fine in that favour. And further, an interesting point is that these fines are not covered by insurance. So they're... Per comes out of your pocket. Comes out of your pocket, either personally or, or out of the company. And that can bankrupt you. So... But John... Yes. It's, it's, it's really serious stuff. John, can I be charged with manslaughter? Uh, there is now uh, legislation in regards to um, workplace manslaughter, Tony. But I don't think anyone's actually been charged right. with Well, that. in bullying, they've actually introduced a law where you can be yes. charged with a crime yes. if you're bullying someone. Yeah. Yes. So if they've done it in that circumstance, you'd think that... It, it's a very grey area. And this may be a criticism going back to well, the Department of Public Prosecutions where really they're not chasing these corporations and these directors for what they're supposed to be doing, Tony. Well, look, with the amount of breaches going on at the moment, you think is it a question of education? Is there a lack of education in the community amongst the employer groups? And, and not only that, uh, I don't think there's a realisation by employers that you're personally liable mm. for the death of a worker at your workplace. Now, let's give us some examples of the ones that of people that have been injured or killed in workplaces. Well, well just in recently, in there's you know one at a, a petrol station where you know there was an incident with a deep fryer. There's one who went through a, a roof at a uh, you know I think at a work site and wasn't obviously adequately uh, um, I suppose put up in terms of the parameters. So look, it's happening every day, Tony. And, and John, what examples have you got there? Look, there's there's a young apprentice, Tony. Cement splashes into his eye. He loses his eyesight. I mean glasses. Safety exactly. Glasses. It's just as simple as that. But one issue I have, particularly with this case, a seven thousand dollar fine. That's outrageous. I mean, he's lost his sight. We've got a young what's, bloke that's lost his sight. What's he worth at common law, John? And for, uh, for that, two hundred thousand dollars, Tony. Oh, I think Approximately. Would you get more than that? For pain, pain and suffering, suffering only. Probably a little well, the maximum is like about 500,000. You'd exactly. think you'd get more than that. Maybe yes. Three. How old? How old was he? Oh, 20 odd. Oh, it's probably yes. What other examples yeah. have you got, John? Yeah. Look, there's there's <clears> other <throat> matter of um, boiling fat sprays into the worker when the pipe bursts. Now, again, was the worker in this case warned that that could occur? No. Uh, what about protective suits, perhaps? Or well, clothing? That's all, and these protective clothing and these protective mm. goggles, they don't cost a lot of money, Tony. No. They're, you know, $30, $40. But the key to it is this, viewers. If you're an employer, you can't take these shortcuts anymore. The Occupational Health and Safety um, Act and regulations, it's just enormous. And there's that many regulations, isn't there, John? Oh, there's, there's, there's quite a few. And I suppose just for the viewers, the, you know, the maximum penalty for a corporation is 250 odd thousand and for an individual... That's per offence. Per offence and then 50,000 for an individual. So we're talking some serious money and I said it can, your company can go But also, over. you've got a criminal conviction against your name which yeah. will, you know, not hold you in What I have an issue with, Tony, is during... Uh, when, they, when the courts are giving judgement against these corporations and these directors, they're taking into account the financial viability of the corporation. Yeah. Well, I've, I guess, got a, I've got a concern about that, Tony. Well, I've done criminal law in the past, and I think what they look at is, unless it's deliberate, um, well, they generally look at... They try and rehabilitate and things like that. Isn't so it deliberate in the deterrence. sense that they have deliberately uh, turned a blind eye to the safety of the worker? I reckon a lot of cases are more stupidity than us. Yeah, and also, look, a lot of, I think, uh, uh, employees are, I suppose... Um, and not interested in doing risk assessments. Sometimes it's a simple mm. risk assessment. This is what you need to make your workplace safe. They don't undertake these, and it's not a, a big expense. Uh, I mean, Tony, we've got a case of nationwide towing, for example, the Department of Public, Public Prosecutions, where the Supreme Court Court of Appeal said in, back in 2011, late last year, that, sure, the aggregate fine against the company of $450,000 was enough, the maximum being nine hundred thousand dollars, 
And, but the appeal was dismissed because they're sort of saying that really 450 grand the for, the, for the lost life of a worker when he was crushed when the, the truck toppled over uh, is enough. Oh, I've yeah, got, look, I've it's got very hard. Mm. It's hard to compare it to. I mean, it's not. You're not you really comparing. A, you can't put a dollar amount on no, 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 fatality. No. And then you've got. Look, but we have to. The matter of Bader Poultry, Tony. Yeah, that's where another. Another person dies, although there's got an issue of contractors and mm. subcontractors. It was a complicated. And, uh, and yeah, it was a very complicated factual yeah. matrix. Where uh, again, it's only a hundred thousand dollar fine. Mm. But that case. Look, there's a couple. I've got a couple of examples here too. A 24 year old Wangaratta man was killed when hit by concrete as he cleaned out a concrete pump hose at a farm at Rutherglen. And there's another one, a 21-year-old plumber died in hospital after receiving an electric shock. Mm. I mean, this is still well, going on, too. Tony, all this sorts of nonsense. You've got one here where a guy fell into some sewage, sewage, sewage plant. Yeah, so. Tony, the, st the statistics say if you're a male over 65 years of age working on a farm involved with a truck, mm. you're in a, the highest High risk. percentage High, high to to have a suffer a fatality. Mm. They're the four factors where it's really, it's about 70 or 80%. If you're an employee, what would you do, Nunes, if you knew that your employer was breaching all sorts of Well, f look, um, first of all, you've got, to make safety. The, you've got to make the complaint to your employer, and if they don't, I suppose he does, then your next step is you've got to go to work safe. I think you make, make, need to make that but complaint. But what about the fact that, you know, most people are worried about losing their jobs. I guess it's better than losing your life. Better than losing your life and somebody mm. else's. If you want to have that on your conscience, I know I wouldn't, so. Mm. And John, if you're an employer, what would you be doing now? Well, you need to check that your health and safety regulations, or well, you are complying with the mm. health and safety regulations, particularly machinery, particularly guards, mm. um, uniforms, goggles, all those type and, of... And John, there should also be training, I would have thought, just in simple things like evacuation procedures. Yeah. Well, that, that's... You know, have fire extinguishers in your premises. That, that's, that's clear, and particularly in the case of Irvine, Tony, uh, sorry, um, Irvine and Dynamic Industries, mm. where an employee fell from the roof seven metres um, to the concrete floor and died. Uh, now, that was one of the main issues, whether or not there was a safety Pro check. Yeah. Mm. Appropriate training as well. And I, and I don't want to go into the fines that the company got because it was totally inadequate, but anyway, that's oh, another issue. Uh, <laughs> Tony, it's, I have to admit, I've got a concern that an $8,000 fine, which was not touched on appeal, Due to the, what, the length of the in uh, another appeal, episode because time's yes, moving. I've got issues. What I want to do is I want to go through the occupational health and safety regulations as a means of trying to uh, pin liability on employers. So look, I, that's as far as we can take we it go today. Go for hours on this. I think, Nuncio, thanks for joining thanks, us thanks, in the work cover. Appreciate it. Liability lawyer, and uh, John. We're going to go to a sponsors break. After the break, we're coming back with the mailbag. Thanks, viewers. Stay tuned.